Hey guys, it's Michael with Mealy Marine, and today is an exciting day. We are on our way to pick up our next project boat. I'm so excited, so be sure to stick around to see what we got. As you all have known, I've been looking for our next project boat for a long time now, and I've spent a lot of time here on Facebook Marketplace. And I feel that Facebook Marketplace is the best place to look for a used boat because it has the widest selection and some of the more reasonable prices on, on boats. Uh, you can also check out OfferUp and Craigslist and other places like that. But I feel that Facebook is superior. It has more listings and there's constantly updated every day. People are adding new boats. So as I was scrolling through Facebook, I saw an ad for a 1988 Ranger 393V. So I've already got done a 363 V that was an 88 year model. So I wasn't overly excited to check it out, but from the picture, I could see that the boat was black and red and that the price was $4,000. So I thought the price was reasonable and I knew that this was a bigger boat. So I went ahead and I clicked on the ad. First thing I do is I scroll through the pictures and scrolling through them, I saw that there was no major damage, and, but the boat was in rough enough shape that would make a good YouTube channel series, right? Uh, I did notice a couple things though. The boat was wet. Sellers usually do this to hide oxidation with gel coat or to make their boat look better, right? Like a wet boat looks better than a dry boat. I did notice that the windshield was missing. The carpet was relatively new and that the seats uh, had been reupholstered at some point in time, but the back was a different color than the front. So I took all those things into consideration. After looking through it, I thought, man, this is a pretty good looking boat. Nothing too crazy where I'll be in over my head uh, trying to restore this thing. So I go over and I look at the description. I scan through the description for one thing, and that's I have the title for the boat and motor. I'm no lawyer, but do not buy a boat without a title. Even if they say, hey, I'll give you a bill of sale, if it was that easy to get a title for a boat, then why don't they just get it before they saw the boat, right? So after I saw that the boat was titled, I went ahead and I re read through some of the other things. Uh, it was a 1988 Ranger 393V. It had a 175 Johnson outboard, a trolling motor, and a small Lowrance graph. It did need new trolling motor batteries, but stated everything works. The seller stated that the trailer needed some work as well, but from the pictures, it seems like I could get it home just fine. Lastly, the boat was listed for $4,000 and had been listed for three to four weeks at this point in time. I felt that the price was a little high, but was in a ballpark where I was comfortable enough to negotiate. So after deciding, hey, this is a, a good enough boat, decent enough for me to go look at, it's in my price range, it's a model that I'm comfortable restoring, I went ahead and I gave the seller a call and this is what we got. Now I wanna start with a complete walkthrough of this boat to give you guys a starting point for this project so that when we're finished, you guys can see how much work we've really done to this boat. Now let's start with the trailer. This is a tandem axle Ranger Trail trailer. We have the brake actuator tongue and a sign that says disc brakes, but there are no brakes on this trailer to speak of. You gotta be kidding me. We also have rusty chain, trailer wiring that doesn't work. This jack has been a big pain in the butt to move the boat around the shop because it doesn't have a wheel. We need a new winch. Obviously new rollers throughout the whole boat. The trailer needs to be repainted, all new LED lights, and the fender is in rough, rough shape. We have some chipping here at the back, carpet missing on the guide. It's pretty bad. It has fairly new tires. The bearings are supposedly greased and it got here fine. Back here at the back, one of the bunks is completely removed. It's torn off because of corrosion over time. Obviously this trailer's probably been in some salt water at some point in time. So that is not good. We are going to have to fix that. 
Like I said, guys, the trailer's in pretty rough shape. And just like in the 363V video series, we're also going to be doing a full restoration on this trailer, but we are going to be doing a lot of upgrades, a lot of really cool things. And we hope that you guys learn something as we restore this trailer. Enough of me talking about the trailer. Let's go ahead and walk around the outside of this boat. Up here at the front, we got a 24 volt motor guy trolling motor. That's, that's ancient, it's rough shape. This is definitely gonna be going. We have the rope tie downs, the nav lights, a little step there. Hopefully that's not covering anything super crazy. The gel coat is in really rough shape. So when you guys have any metal flake like this, even if it's a little bit like that or just pure metal flake and you can rub your hand and feel the flake so it feels rough kind of like sandpaper that means that the clear coat has deteriorated and it's gone and no matter how much you wet sand it's not going to come back actually the more you wet sand if you look at this red here the more you wet sand the color of the flake will change to silver so here at the console we are missing a windshield here we got a rope to grab that windshield is cracked. We do have a big or relatively big scar here on the gel coat that's gone into the fiberglass and it's kind of bubbled the uh, gel coat fiberglass. It's not, this is not flat anymore. So we're going to be addressing that. Here at the back, we got a Johnson GT 175. It runs great actually, it's, but this is not the motor that's gonna stay on this boat. And uh, if this boat is rated for a 200, I have to put a 200 on the back of it. You know what I'm saying? So the back of the boat, something that a lot of people said in the 363V was that the transoms definitely rotted. Blah, blah, blah. Well, guys, in 1987, Ranger switched from a wood transom to a composite transom. So there should be no rot. If there is any structural problems with this boat, they are going to be resolved. There is going to be a lot of work done to this boat. And so we're not going to take any chances, especially if we're going to be hanging a 200 horsepower motor from the back of it. So that's enough of me talking about the outside. Let's go ahead and we'll hop in on the inside. I'll show you guys all the craziness in there. Here at the bow, we've got that recessed control panel, just like the 363 did. We are going to be doing something completely different with the front of this one. The carpet is in very good shape overall. I'm very happy with it but it's gone as well. We got our front cooler here. That's real nasty. Cooler, just in case somebody forgot. So on the port side, we have the <laughs> cushion seat with no back, no nothing. This is definitely going to be getting removed, but it's in really decent shape. Really dirty and nasty in here. You guys know we're gonna go ahead and do our Mealy Marine thorough clean before we get started on this boat. This did not come with the accordion style lid for this side on the starboard. We've got our coin box here at the console or passenger console. It looks like there was some wiring for a stereo system right there. What's super nice about this is we have the full bench seat, not just the back. We have the bottom as well, which is super nice. Um, we are definitely going to be utilizing this in the build at the console here. It's just, you know, your typical Ranger console from that era. Something I did learn is you can order these panels from Ranger. They do have some still laying around. And then moving on back to the back, the back deck is really, really big. I really like this locker. I don't really know what you would use it for, but I think it's super cool. A good use of space here on the port side, just a big storage locker with a bunch of stuff in it. we got two live wells. Let's see if I can open them. Just your typical live well. And then over here on the starboard side, just another locker storage area with a bunch of stuff see how many tools and stuff we can get out of this project and lastly the battery compartment yeah and man oh man is it in rough shape it's as dirty as any other one i've ever worked on there is some uh hose like garden hose in there you guys can't really see it let me see <laughs> The wiring is just strewn everywhere. You guys know we're definitely going to be replacing all of this and making it super clean back here. We got a charger. Don't believe it works. Water fuel separator back there. Mess.
Well, that's it for this week's video. I hope you are as excited as we are to see the transformation of this project. Please be sure to subscribe, like, and share, and also comment down below what you'd like to see us do to this boat. Anything you can think of, we'd love to hear it. And be sure to check back next week where we go shopping for a new outboard motor. Until next time, guys.